Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. To all returning subscribers, I want to say a very big thank you. And if you're just joining me for the very first time, thank you so much. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, please hit the subscribe button, turn on your notification bell. And guess what, guys? We're about to have a ride of a lifetime. So today I'm going to bring you the analysis from the episode three of the Big Brother Ninja lockdown highlights. So the highlights started, and of course, we could see the housemates getting out of bed, and of course, we saw Bright so in the kitchen trying to make Indomie, and then we saw how the journey of Kidwire and Erika began. <laughs> Have you seen Bright's <laughs> ball make Indomie? <laughs> you are in for a treat. So I think it was at this point that the chemistry between Kid Wire and Erika began to brew. So at this point, both of them began to find themselves attractive. It was at this point that we began to see that there was a triangle that was beginning to form because there was Lacon in the picture. Then of course we also saw where you know they had this game where they actually sat on each other. Some of the housemates sat on Kid Wire and rode him, and of course we saw you know some of some of the other housemates sat on um. Eric and also wrote him. So it was just a normal game after that. And the next thing that stood out for me, as we all remember, was the clash, the epic clash that happened between Katrina and t -Bad. And now let me tell you this. So at this point, I began to see the fact that people, some people didn't really understand the fact that we're in this house and everybody has got the same rights. You understand? So I am beginning to see it from the perspective, you know, of a third party having to see that the whole event had happened. So right now I begin to look at it like, you know, they got into the house and some people just feel that, okay, I'm an elder in my house. I'm a, I'm a senior brother. I'm an elder brother in my house. I can tell people what to do in this place. I can tell you when to eat or when not to eat. I can tell you not to come into the kitchen or not. And for some other people, that's not how they were, they were brought up. They walk into the kitchen anytime. I mean, I know families where you can just walk into the kitchen and cook what you want to eat. For some other people, they don't do that in their houses. What they, what they do is this. Whatever they cook, if they cook rice today, it's rice everybody's eating, even if you don't feel like eating rice. So at this point, I don't think the Katrina on understood the fact that this was you know um 20 people come together from different backgrounds you have to find a leveling ground so if tell anybody you walked into the kitchen to prepare egg while you were cooking it still didn't mean that you, you weren't going to serve her you understand so you're just a way to walk around it i'm not going to blame katrina because i understood the fact that you know she wanted the food to go around but of course tell anybody wasn't taking any of that now this brings me to where lecon and erika were having a conversation about how lecon feels and how you know he, he felt disappointed not having erika's back in a particular situation i would not necessarily remember the situation because we were not shown in the highlights oh i still don't know about this yes. yes. I have a feeling that your anger will not be coming. No, of course, my anger is not good. Then what is anger? So at this point he was telling Erica about the fact that you know what he, he doesn't believe in not expressing how he feels and all of that and Erica was also telling him about her anger issues how that she can really get angry and for me personally I would not blame Lecon for feeling that type of way because for every guy who sees a girl is a potential girl that could be his girlfriend and you probably get, begin to see that another guy is trying to get in the mix and you begin to see that maybe that guy has the upper hand because in the real sense when the show started we saw Lecon and we saw Kibwaya and of course because the fact that Lecon won yes we can know that Okay, you know, he has a bit of level right now and all of that. But in the house, we saw Lecon and we saw Kid White, and we knew that with Erika, Lecon had no way at all. We also saw how the relationship between New and V, you know, continued to blossom. You know, there was so much of PDA, there was so much of PDA, public display of affection, how they were loving on each other, and all of that. And even some housemates had to tell like, guys, go and get your room. The love between V and Neo began to grow so strong that during the truth of their game, Neo was dared to suck V's toes. And it literally did that. I think it kissed her, her, her legs, not necessarily suck her toes or whatever it was. But it literally kissed her leg. And of course, at that point, I knew that, yo, Neo has entered this one. Now, I want to talk about Lucy and Katrina. So, Lucy won the head of the house. She was the second head of the house. And of course, she literally would have chosen Katrina to be the deputy. But of course, Big Brother busted her bubbles and said, you know what, you have to pick someone of the opposite sex. Now, if you watch the show properly, you realize that there was a very strong friendship bond between Katrina and Lucy. And it's amazing how that right now has gone from 100 to zero because right now they're not on talking terms. And I just begin to imagine the fact that, you know what, you could have a friendship, you could have a relationship, but if you do not really manage, if you don't find values and all of that, it will go from 100 to zero. I mean, it was so crazy that, you know, Lucy was disappointed at the fact that she could not pick Katrina 
to become a deputy. There were times in the house during the show that Lucy would literally cry because the housemates were making jests or were putting Katrina's image in a bad light. So at this point right now, Lucy won the head of the house, could not choose Katrina. And of course, you know, we also saw Katrina trying to say that, you know what, it was a good thing for her. I mean, she was trying to take some good faith saying that, I mean, she was going to also be that fan base outside so that this when she's up for subsequent evictions, you know, she can survive. But little did she know that she was also going to leave as soon as she was put up for eviction. I think one of the places that uh, Big Brother didn't literally show us, I'm not sure if they're going to show us in the next episode, was where Katrina and Praise had... You heard me right, right? Now, one of the places that caught my attention was where Lika was talking to Nengi, Oz and Prince about who Lucy was going to choose as the deputy. And we literally could hear Lika telling those three people that Lucy keeps grudges. And right now, I think it literally showed over time that Lucy probably keeps grudges because sometimes you're going to find people who really, really will hurt you. I'm, I'm I know that hurt is in level of degrees, but I know that sometimes people will step on your toes and all of that. Right now, with this stance, Lucy is not necessarily friends with everybody in the house. She's just friends with a few people, and she's shown it over time that if you're not friends with me in the house, you can never be friends outside of the house, which I think is totally wrong, because sometimes you're in an enclosed place with 20 people, you might not necessarily be strong with someone. I'll, I'll give you an example. Dorothy and Lilo were not great you know, friends in the house, but as it stands right now, those two are inseparable. They are very strong outside of the house. So for, for Lecon, what he said about Lucy was quite true, because Every time you see the Lucy fights with someone, she never will get back to being friends with that person. I am waiting to see the conversation that's going to brew between Katrina and Lucy when you can ask questions about the level of friendship right now. I want to see the drama that will ensue. Now, something happened while they were having the truth or their game. We saw where, you know, they were still asking questions about, you know, who's your favorite housemate and all of that. And somebody, Prince asked, Prince, who's your least favorite housemate? And he said, Kaisha. And you know, Kaisha was really angry at the fact that why would you choose me as your least favorite housemate? You're trying to put, you know, paint me black in the eyes of people. And then they started the truth or their game and Kaisha wasn't going to participate in the truth or their game. And trust me, I don't blame her for not participating because there's a type of way you feel. I mean, you're just like about, maybe you're, just, you're not two weeks in the house yet and somebody is putting you in bad light, which I totally understand because Kaisha is, you know, she has her own style. You get my point. And at that point, she didn't participate in the truth of the game. And we could see Erica telling her that, you know what? If you're going to sit on this table, you have to participate in the game. Now, which I also think is it's, it's a bit of wrong. We can skip the person. That is, the Big Brother house is nobody's house. It's Biggie's house. It's nobody's father's house. Everybody was sitting on the dining. So if you feel that somebody wasn't going to participate, there's a type of way you will address the person. You're not going to tell the person if you're not going to participate in this game, you don't have to sit on this table. It's not your table. It is our table. So I'll decide if I want to sit there or not. And I like what Kaisha did. Kaisha decided to say, well, you know what? I'm going to sit here. I think she eventually left, which I'm not sure. But she actually just told them, I mean, why would I not sit on this table? I'm not participating in this game. So if it means I have to take a shot, a drink, if I do not participate, so be it. Now, you see, for me, I literally do not like guys that talk too much. So Neo was in the in the garden and Nengi came to meet him and said, you know what, how did I perform as a head of house? And you know, Neil was telling her that, you know, you did well, you're a fine girl, you didn't even show that you're a fine girl, you're a beautiful girl, you carried everybody along, you're you know, you're humble, you know, you related well with everybody. And then he just needs the V conversation and he say, ah, I know how that you know V walked up to him and he girl walk up to me. If I feel I'm trying to feel a girl of girl is trying to walk up to me, that's where I package myself. And in my mind, I mean you don't talk too much. She walked up to you Nice, thank God. She walked up to you, enjoy it, and keep shots. You got know what I'm talking about? Because right now, I'm trying to see what's going on in V's mind watching this. You understand? I know that, you know, when a girl walks up to you, there's a level of confidence and there's a level of, how would I put it, there's a level of self esteem she has. You understand? To be able to have been able to walk up to you and say, Oh, I like you as a guy. And I feel that after she's done that, you don't need to rub it everywhere. You don't need to paint it. Yeah. You know, she, this girl, this girl walked up to me. She likes me. She's the one who walked up to me. I didn't walk up to her. You understand? Don't, you don't need to put it in her face. So tell people, right? I know that their relationship is strong right now, but I mean, I don't know how V will feel watching this right now, looking at the fact that you know, he was all about telling people that, I mean, he told Eric already, you understand, which I saw yesterday. And now he's telling Nengi. I don't know who people that is going to show again that he was telling. You get what I'm talking about? But I feel that if you're in a relationship with someone, maybe the lady walked up to you and asked you either you like her and you guys are getting along. Bro, pocket it and do rub it in her face. Now back to Leko and Erika's story. I think that Leko had begun to see that Kid Wire was already intruding 
into Enrico's heart. So what he wanted to do was this. He just got a ring and you know, he, he decided to propose to Enrico. I don't know if it was a real proposal or a fake proposal, proposal rather. But in the long run, he proposed to Enrico. And you know, Enrico accepted the proposal. You know, jokingly, it was more like a play. But to Lecon, I think that was a serious proposal. <laughs> because after that, we started seeing a series of you know heart issues. How the, the and they come wouldn't feel good about the fact that Kidwai was holding Erika in some type of way, or they were getting along in some type of way, or they were kissing in his presence, and he would leave there, which was one of the reasons why V was really against Erika. Like you know that this guy likes you, and you'll be kissing him in the presence of a not, you'll be kissing a guy in the in his presence, and you think he's not gonna feel some type of way. So for Lecon, I think they took that proposal thing seriously, and in the long run, it really affected him during the game. Later, we saw Kidwai and Erika in the garden talking about how they probably liked like each other and you know they were trying to be very careful nobody wanted to jump from what i saw nobody wanted to be the first one to say i like you i want to have a relationship but i think i liked the fact that kid wire knew what he was doing kid wire has seen a lot of things he's been everywhere so him being on that show was just you know to come and just get the name for himself so all he was trying to tell erica was you know what i like we've been friends at first and if we feel that we're, we're feeling each other's vibes we can take it to the next level but i think that erica already liked him you get my point so she was just trying to say okay i mean i don't want to jump if this guy is saying this let me also follow so i don't want to say i like him and be like i'm the one that's jumping so she also said you know what i don't think i i'm going to I, I didn't come to the house thinking i wanted to have a relationship but if it happens it happens and she was trying to tell kid why you know he's a cute guy he's a fine guy you get what i'm talking about she was indirectly telling him that hey you're not fine but we know sometimes when the girls say you're not fine we should fine now with the fact that Lucy was the head of house, there were a lot of things that were happening in the second week already. The house was in disarray, a lot of things were not going as planned. So Big Brother called the housemates because Big Brother likes drama anyways. That was what made the show interesting. So Big Brother called the housemates one after the other and started asking them what they thought about Lucy's leadership. And you know what? The housemates started saying, you know what, I'm not, we're not feeling this Lucy's leadership and all of that. Then we also saw where, you know, Dorothy was talking to Ozo about the fact that he was already freeing Nengi because Prince was getting into the mix. There was a time that, you know, a housemate asked Prince who he was going to have sexual intercourse with. That was V asking Prince which of the female housemates would he have sexual intercourse with. And it was like the girl who's wearing my cap. And at that point, Ningo was wearing his cap. So I think that at that point, Big Brother didn't show where he had to demonstrate sexual, you know, position and all of that. So um, also felt really bad about it and was trying to drift from Nengi. But Dorothy had to tell him that, you know what, you have to get back to her. You have to apologize to her because you've been avoiding her and i'm sure that nengi had been all over us trying to say what's up with you why are you avoiding me and all of that that is we need right here on the analysis for the episode three of the big brother niger lockdown highlights so for those of you who have questions please go on twitter and of course ask a book of the questions i'm sure you can see that right now ask a book of the questions you've been itching to ask the housemates and of course your question will most likely be chosen during the reunion of the lockdown gang my name is olufemi daniel please if you're not subscribed to my channel please hit the subscribe button turn on your notification bell so guess what you get notified whenever i post a video go on all social media platforms on facebook instagram and twitter and of course on tiktok and follow me at the femi daniel until next time i come your way very soon it's bye for now